Well, if you've been following me for a little while, you know that I am madly in love with my Amana surfacing bit. But there is one small problem with it. Actually, a large problem. This is my Avid three-way touch plate. It's got the little boss here on the bottom so I could use it to find a corner of a piece of material. And the bit drops down inside of it and moves in Y and in X to find the outside diameter of the bit to set the X, Y, and Z zero. The problem is it's too big to fit down inside of this Avid touch plate to touch off to this brass surface here to set the Z. So if you've watched my last couple of videos, you'll know that I was using the old piece of paper underneath it, wiggle back and forth until I touch it, and set that for my Z0. But that slows down the work, and I knew there had to be a better way. So what I decided to do was add a second touch plate to the mix. This way, I can go into the auto touch off, and I can touch off one blade of the Amana bit and set my Z0 that way. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I hooked up both of these touch plates to the Avid CNC control box so that I could use either one of them. Now in order to make this connection, we're going to need a few parts, of course. The first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a M12 cable, four pin. Now, if we take a look here, I have an M12 four pin male end and a female end. You wouldn't think these would be that difficult to find, but actually they kind of are. So I've done a little bit of footwork and I've put links to all of these parts down in the description box of this video. I chose a five meter or 16 foot cable simply because it will reach anywhere on my CNC table and it suits my purposes. You can use whatever length of cable you'd like. Second thing we're going to need is a way to split the signal from the two touch plates. And that's where we end up with a splitter with the male end, a single male four pin end, and two female four pin ends. I'll disconnect the Avid CNC touch plate from the control box, plug this cable and the Avid CNC touch plate cable into the splitter, and then attach this to the proper connection on the control box. Now for the far end, I need a field wireable connection. Now this is just for convenience, but it makes things oh so much easier. This is simply a connector for the female end of this M12 cable, and then I can take this shield off and wire my touch plate to it. It also comes with built in strain relief, which will be a lot more effective when I put some heat shrink tubing around it. Now, this touch plate comes with a banana plug at one end, and that's just for convenience. And I've got about three feet of wire here. This is 16 gauge wire and another three foot length of 16 gauge ground wire. And we'll wire all this up a little bit later on. For my ground wire, I used to use an alligator clip, but this bit being as big as it is, that alligator clip wouldn't go around the shank and it wouldn't attach anywhere else on that bit. So I took a cue from Avid CNC and I got hold of this 5 8 inch diameter magnet that has a threaded stud on the back side of it. So I'm going to 
connect this ring terminal to my ground wire and then attach it with this nut. Let's go ahead, get started. We'll run the cables, then we'll come back and we'll wire this other touch plate in. With the plug and play portion of this operation finished, now we're ready to wire in the touch plate into our field wireable connector. Now, as I said earlier, my touch plate has a banana plug at one end, and my ground wire doesn't have anything at either end. So, what I'm going to do is going to take these two wires here that I have already stripped a little bit of insulation off of, I'm going to go ahead and throw some heat shrink tubing over them now, just so I can come back a little bit later on and shrink that down. Then I need to thread both ends of my field wireable connection on. That's the strain relief and the housing. And now it's time to wire up the plug. Avid CNC has a wiring diagram for their M12 plugs on their website. And I've put a link to that schematic down in the description of this video. Basically, the only two pins we're going to use are going to be pin 3 and pin 4. Looking at the plug, you have this tang up here on the top. That is the uh, alignment pin. Pins three and four are the two pins down on the bottom. This is pin three. This is pin four. Now, the touch plates on Avid CNC are wired as normally open. Pin three is the ground. Pin 4 is normally open. So I'm going to attach my black wire to pin 3 and my red wire to pin 4. With both of those wires attached, I'm now ready to go ahead, pull my heat shrink down. Now go ahead and grab my heat gun and shrink this down. Okay, with the heat shrink shrunk, I can now bring down the cover. Screw that down nice and tight. And now my strain relief can come down over the heat shrink. And I can put that together like so. Now I'm ready to plug this into the other end of my M12 cable, and I'm almost ready to use it. Now for the last part of the wiring, I'll go ahead and throw a small piece of heat shrink tubing down here, put my terminal, my ring terminal, on this end of the ground wire, Take my crimper, crimp it down. And now take my heat gun. There we go. Now all that remains is tightening up this little nut on the threaded stud. As soon as this cools off a little bit, and I'm all set to go. Okay, with the controller fired up, I've moved my gantry forward here so I can test this to make sure I've got good connectivity. I've got Mach 4 loaded. I have not homed my machine. What I'm doing now is a preliminary test just to make sure that we have connectivity. So I'm going to be looking at this LED right here next to probe signal currently says inactive. 
So all I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the magnet to the touch plate and see what happens. It says active and it's turned blue. Take it away and it says inactive and it darkens. So that means we've got good connectivity here. Now, let me go ahead and attach it to any of the blades or anywhere on this bit. I'm going to go ahead and hook it right here. And now I'll bring my touch plate up and see what happens with our light on Mach 4. Active. So far, so good. But let's see if sticking it to just the body of the bit will make a difference. Will I still get connectivity here? Yes, I will. It will connect anywhere. Something to be careful of with a lot of bits. If you don't have bare metal, check your touch plate before you start using it. You want to try to connect to bare metal if possible. Now this magnet's too big for me to get up here and use it on the collet nut. I could probably hook it to the spindle. See what we get? Yes, we do get active. But I prefer to connect it to the bit itself just in case something in here is non-conductive. So, knowing now that I get a good signal on the bit, I'm ready to use this touch plate. Almost, because there's a setting in Mach 4 that I need to change. And now to use this touch plate with Mach 4, Mach 3, any controller software actually, I need to know the thickness of the touch plate, because that's what's going to determine how far Mach 4 sets that Z0 from the top of this touch plate. Going to take my calipers here, and I'm going to measure the thickness in a couple of different places. And I have 0 0.619, 0.619, Point six one nine. So I'm going to write on it point six one nine. And I'll write on this side as well. Now, the reason I need to know that is because when I go to use this in Mach 4, I'm going to have to change the thickness of the touch plate in Mach 4. So let's go over and I'll show you how I'm going to do that right now. Here in Mach 4, I'm going to go over here to my Auto Z touch plate right here. And again, I'm sorry I don't have screen capture software on this computer. This is the best I can do. I'll click on Auto Z touch plate. Now, because I have not homed in the machine, I can't actually use the touch plate yet, but I can show you that setting. I'll click OK and it opens the Auto Z and Corner Finding touch plate. I'll come over here to Advanced Settings and it opens up this little panel here. I'm going to click on the tab that says Touch Plate Dimensions. And right here, the top blank, we have Touch Plate Height. Now, the standard Avid CNC touch plate is one inch. So that's easy to remember. I don't need to write on my touch plate or anything. But what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to remember when I use that second touch plate, I'm going to need to come in here and change this. And I'll change it right here to 0.619. And I'll click Save. Now the touch plate is ready to be used with my big Amana bit. If I go to use another bit, 
that will fit inside the Avid CNC touch plate. I've got to remember to come up here to Advanced Settings, Touch Plate Dimensions, and change this to 1.0. Click Save, and I'm ready to use the Avid CNC touch plate. So that's all there is to it. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, well, this doesn't apply to me. Why do I care about a touch plate for an Avid CNC? Well, my overall point in this is not to be afraid to accessorize your CNC router. Now, if you don't have an Avid CNC, or if you don't use Mach 3 or Mach 4, contact your machine's manufacturer before you make any modification like this. You don't want to void your warranty and you don't want to cause other issues. But if you have an Avid CNC and you'd like to add an accessory like this, contact Avid Support through their website and they can guide you through it. I have put links to all of the parts and supplies that I've used in this modification, except for the touch plate itself, down in the description box of this video. If you don't want to use those links, contact Avid CNC through their website and they can take care of supplying you with the splitter, the cable, the field wireable connection, all of that. It's not listed on their sales pages, but they can sell you the proper parts if you don't want to source them somewhere else. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about this, like why did I add a second touch plate when there are so many other options available? And those are legitimate questions. So this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where you can ask me anything about anything I've shown in this video or any of my previous videos. That's this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I've put a link to that live Q&A down in the description box of this video. Now, before we wrap things up, I would like to give a special shout out and say a special thank you to all of my channel members. Thank you very much. If you'd like information on how to become a channel member, just click that join button down there next to the subscribe button. A panel will pop up and a video will play that'll tell you all about channel membership. So, I hope to see you this afternoon for the live Q&A session. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, whether you become a channel member or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch. Y'all take care.